Good morning, Chag Rosh Hashanah Sameach, Shana Tova, Happy Jewish New Year. I am so excited to be getting ready for Rosh Hashanah. And if you've watched my channel for a while, you know that one of the first things we always do is that we go apple picking. So I'm very, very excited because this morning, we're going apple picking. We're almost ready to go-ish. And then once we have all our apples, I can start to get my home ready for Rosh Hashanah. I've taken everything out of storage in the basement. Don't take a pencil on me. I'm not. I've taken everything out of our storage box in the basement, gotten it all ready, so I'm gonna show you all my Rosh Hashanah prep and get ready. So thank you for being here with me another year getting ready for Rosh Hashanah. Let's go. We're about to jump in the car, but I forgot to tell you this is our first Rosh Hashanah with my little baby, Zachary. Last year, Rosh Hashanah, I was pregnant with him. Things were crazy because I was gonna be due in a month. And now he's here, a little 10 month old. So I'm so excited for his first Rosh Hashanah too. So every year we kick off Rosh Hashanah season and the high holidays with a trip to the apple farm to pick apples. This is one of our absolute favorite family traditions. I did not grow up doing this. I don't know, is it like in California there aren't apple farms, but on the East Coast, it's such a popular activity to do. Pick your own apples and then pumpkins and then peaches. We just go the whole year round, but apple picking is always the most special because we go for Rosh Hashanah. Uh -huh. Thanks, guys. And then of course I use my apples to make all my special and most favorite apple oh, desserts and then apples dipped in honey for the holidays and there's just so many uses for them so I love that aspect too because my kids love to pick like an entire bushel of apples but it's always so fun and Apples is actually one of my kids' favorite snacks too, so that helps. And of course, this was Zachary's first year coming with us, which was just the most exciting, adorable thing. Last year, I was very, very pregnant with him because he's almost a year old now, so um, I remember just feeling enormous and couldn't believe that he was almost gonna be here, and now he's almost one years old, which is just blows my mind. Zachy, did you get an apple? Zach. Zach, he's probably our youngest. Whoa! <laughs> Don't scare him. <laughs> What'd you get? So what's really nice also about this little farm we go to is they have a ton of animals to pet and to feed and my kids absolutely love the goats. That's kind of the highlight for them. Um, we get a little like ice cream cone of goat food <laughs> and they get the biggest kick out of feeding them. It's so sweet. And we actually sort of know the goats now. We saw them when they were just born. Um, I think it was at the beginning of the summer. I don't remember exactly, but now they're like growing up. It's so cute. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm already over overwhelmed and verklempt about my own kids growing up and now I have to worry about the goat kids. <laughs> Tails wagging, he likes it, right? Ma! Well, let's give him another toe. So here are all the apples we picked. Aren't they gorgeous? I love fresh apples from the farm. And we also got some blackberries and some other beautiful fruits and vegetables today. Very excited. I think me and Cory are actually going to bake an apple pie very soon. Okay, what a day. We are back from apple picking and our friends relaxing, babies napping, and I wanted to show you guys all my Rosh Hashanah stuff that is like packed away normally in the basement brought it all out so I can assess what I have, what I need. Some stuff you'll have seen before if you've watched my channel, and some stuff is new. Okay, so first some like really beautiful Judaica items. First, you guys have seen this one before. These are plate toppers, is that what you call them? Plate decorators, <laughs> like you put them on a platter kind of thing. This is from Yali Vogel Art. I've shared her stuff before. She makes beautiful Judaica. And this is her new uh, honey dish for like apples dipped in honey. Here's what it looks like out of the container. And she actually has a lot of um, Judaica items that are really beautiful. 
Okay, then I got some honey for the grocery store. I'm just putting, putting everything on our dining room table so I have it set out. This was our PJ Library book this year. I always share about PJ Library because they send free books if you're raising a Jewish child. Sometimes they're themed for the holidays. Sometimes they're spelled like Jewish values and stuff. But I will link the PJ Library site where you can sign up. This is my Rosh Hashanah banner from last year. And I'll show you my new one. I think this one I might put... I'm not sure either in this room or the dining or the dining room, this room or the family room. And then I have a second new one I'll show you. These I just got for Zachary. Aren't they so cute? They're from Gap. Little Apple PJs. <laughs> so cute. Um, and then I got this new, this is like a Lazy Susan. It's a marble one with a wooden bottom. This is from Target. I think it was $30. It's so pretty. So I thought that would be a gorgeous challah plate because it's round. And then speaking of challah, I have two new tablecloths. This one is from Shelly Isaacson Designs. That's her company. That's what it looks like. And um, it's like a laser cutout with pomegranates. And it says Shabbat Vayom Tov, Shabbat and the High Holidays. And then of course, I've got my Jewish holiday calendar that I saw in my Etsy shop. Definitely check that out. It has all the holidays listed and when they are with their English dates. So you never have to miss a holiday. So it's for this Jewish New Year, so it starts and ends with Rosh Hashanah. Um, this is for like little table settings. It's little um, honey sticks and little name tags and a little bee. And then this is my Shana Tova table runner. It's so gorgeous. I love the colors on this. They really pop. They like make the dining room look so pretty. So that's the stuff I have out over here. Then something new for this year is I found this card. It was actually at Whole Foods. It's uh, the Papyrus brand. So I thought of taking it out of here and just putting it in a gold frame. I thought that would look really pretty. This is from ages ago from a grocery store find. This is my other honey dish that I've had for years. This is the Michael Aram one. It's so gorgeous. This was a Target dollar spot find a few years ago, as was this one. Always check out their back to school stuff because they often will have Apple things. And then this is another beautiful challah cover. This my sister got me in Israel. It says Lichvod Shabbat for Yom Tov. So another one that's perfect for Shabbat or the high holidays. So I'm really excited about that. Again, with the pomegranates in the red. Okay, then speaking of clothes. I also got the boys' new high holiday outfits, which I like to do each year. This is probably the my most favorite outfit I've ever purchased in my life. It is Zachary's little apple onesie. It's so cute. This is by the brand Smockingbird. They have all kinds of these like old-fashioned baby clothes like this. Oh, it's so, so cute. Um, so that's his. And then the older boys got their little monogram shirts like hitting on that little red theme and these are from cecil and lou they're so sweet um i always laugh when people say like oh there's no cute boys clothes and i would say i would argue that that's not correct you just have to kind of look a little harder to find it they're not as readily available but there are just oh, such gorgeous boys clothes i'm so excited for them to wear these little outfits then this is the new banner I got. This is from Etsy. It's from a shop called Felt and Play. I was just looking to link it on my Instagram and I don't think that they are around at the moment. But my little tip is that if you want something, Etsy does so much custom stuff. So like she doesn't sell Shana Tova signs. She sells like Thanksgiving and Christmas and all that. And I just asked her if she could make one with a custom wording. She's like, yeah, sure. So there's so many Etsy shops that will do that. So we, I got a Hanukkah one and a Shana Tova one i chose the colors and everything so i'm really excited about to hang that up as well okay so what i always do after apple picking is make an apple pie my kids know i'm gonna do this every year so they always like as soon as we get home they're like let's make the pie but then of course i end up doing the whole thing motherhood what can i say but i don't mind it's one of my favorite things so this is my special KitchenAid attachment. I use it every year for Rosh Hashanah. I don't really use it much outside of Rosh Hashanah. Um, when I first got it, I used it a lot for like spiralized zucchini and that kind of thing. But these days, I pretty much take it out once a year for my apples. But it really, really helps if, <laughs> if you're gonna make apple pie. It makes the work um, go by so fast. So it has different attachments. It can peel the apple or just cut it like this, spiralize it. It can do a whole bunch of things, but mostly I just keep the peel on. I don't mind it. Um, it's got extra nutrients. And then I just have it do like a little spiral cut. 
Um, and then once the KitchenAid has done its work, oh wait, before I get to that, this is my new KitchenAid. <laughs> if you've been following along, my old one broke after 10 years. I did this enormous hollow dough in it and it broke. Anyways, this is my new one, I love it. So this is what the apples look like when they come out and then all I do is take a knife and just chop them basically in half just to kind of break that long spiral um, but it's super easy and then I just get started on my pie recipe which also is super easy and not really a recipe I just put in sugar cinnamon a little bit of allspice if I have it you know like pumpkin pie spice anything like that um, mix it together and then I add flour and a little bit of cornstarch just to soak up some of those apple juices so the pie is not too runny and speaking of baking check how full my freezer is i have been prepping with my round hello my regular hello my honey cake everything is in the freezer and ready to go um, i shared a whole video about how i make my round hollas but i'll just show you really quickly a little throwback to that um, to the braiding and putting in the oven just so you guys can see I wanted to showcase this little tip I have which is to put a tiny bit of tin foil on the underside of your round collar it really helps it puff up in the center because of the way the braid works it can kind of sink a little bit so I just use that little trick to make them really gorgeous and have to have the centers pop up to the top and then I did a little a reel on my Instagram about how to make my honey cake. I have a whole video on YouTube, so I didn't film it for YouTube. Um, but if you're curious, I will link that below. And then I always use this silicone mold to do these little like honeycomb um, pieces, which are so cute. And then they're easy to break off for guests too. Um, and that recipe freezes really well. So I will link that video and the recipe as well as that silicone baking mold if you want it. Okay, and then back to my apple pie. I just used frozen pie crust. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint anyone, but <laughs> because we've just done a whole day of apple picking and everyone's tired and hot from a long day, I just make it super easy. Um, but yeah, I just use my hands, mix everything together, put it in the pie shell, bake it up, and it's absolutely delicious. Those are the pie crusts. Again, they're just the easy frozen pie crust. Just pop one at the bottom of the baking sheet and then fill it with the apples and then put the other one over it. And then I just cut four slits at the top so that it can breathe and let some of the steam out. And then I just bake it. I think I put it in at 350 for about an hour to bake it all the way through. And I have this little um, pie edge for texture. Um, but basically like once the pie is baked for 30 minutes or so, the edges can start to brown more quickly than you want them to. So it just covers the edges so they don't do that. My sister got it for me. It's super useful. If you don't have one, you can also just make one out of tin foil. Um, but having one is really useful if you make pies a lot. <laughs> So there's my apple pie, and that is our home getting ready for Rosh Hashanah. I can't wait to share more videos with you guys. I'm going to be decorating the home and cooking for guests and just spiritually getting ready. So, so definitely hit that red subscribe button so when you go on YouTube, you'll see my videos pop up. And give this one a big thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!